thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning. Uh, for those, well, again, I'm, I'm John Paris. I'm, I'm the chair of our endorsement committee. We've interacted sure. before. Um, and currently, Maryland is running for Senate State District 8, correct? correct. Um, Marilyn, I, I know we've met with you before, so you don't need to go into the background of, of AAG. I will tell you this, regarding our endorsements, we will be releasing them sometime mid to late next week, probably Wednesday or Thursday is when we plan on getting them out. In addition to informing the candidates of whom we're endorsing for the various races, we're also taking ad space out in various Asian newspapers and periodicals, and we'll be posting uh, essentially our slate card of individuals who we're endorsing uh, for uh, basically the entire month of October. Furthermore, on October 18th, we'll be having a hosting a free lunch at the Harbor Palace restaurant, which is just up the road right. in the main Chinatown <laughs> complex. Uh, a free lunch for anyone who cares to attend. We'll be inviting the candidates who we're endorsing, and we'll pro provide copies of our slate cards, and we'll be encouraging them, <clears throat> excuse me, to take advantage of the early voting station, which is located literally. 104 feet away from the right. front door of the restaurant. Okay. So um, that that will be um, that's what we try and do to get the word out regarding the candidates who we're endorsing sure. and who seem to be um, willing to take time out of their busy schedule to come join us for events such as this. Right. That all having been said, I I know you've interviewed with us before. Uh, your race seems to have um, uh, a little bit more. Uh, shall we say, negative campaigning, not, not so much on your side. Um, what kind of feedback have you been getting from your uh, potential constituents regarding the negative or positive impact of the various ads and, and flyers that have been floating around regarding your race? Well, I think that um, people in general don't like negative campaigning. Um, at some point, if uh, people negatively campaign against you, um, you, have, you do respond. So uh, that's one thing that I would say. Um, uh, we have tried to uh, have a positive approach. Um, we've tried to send out our mailers saying, this is who I am, this is what I represent, rather than you know, doing the negative things. Now, uh, there's IEs, which are independent expenditures, that are, it's illegal to contact candidates. So you would never know who does those. Um, so I can't speak to anything that comes out that isn't from a candidate, but um, generally our, um, our mode of operation is to just have a positive campaign and tell people who I am and why I'm a good representative and why I would be the best choice. Okay. Obviously you have a significant background in the educational system. Um, what ideas do you have, more short term than long term, to start boosting up Nevada's uh, less than stellar educational system? Well, one of the things I like to tell people is, first of all, when I knock on the door and I see that people have little kids, or even if they don't, I usually say, you know, what's your main priority? If they say education, I ask them how they like their neighborhood school, especially if they have little children. And they almost always say, we love our school, we love everybody there, we love the principal. And I said, well, how do you think the school district is doing in general, uh, not so well. So there's definitely a disconnect, and not too dissimilar than Congress and our state representatives. Um, you know, there's a disconnect between the hierarchy. I have a lot of um, faith in um, Pat Sporkowski and his team that have started now. I think they're doing a great job. I don't think it's going to turn around in two minutes. Um, most things don't, they take years to get there. Um, so short term, I think that we have to um, embrace our teachers, give them good, positive professional development, and uh, the same with our ad administrators. They need to have that positive professional development and mentoring to keep them on the right course. But I would tell you that I think most of our schools are, are doing a pretty good job. Um, I think where the data lacks is a lot of times, um, and I use this as an example, although this has been changed in the last couple of years. You know, for years, if somebody was at Spring Valley High School, Sierra Vista High School, Bonanza High School, and they left and went to homeschooling, left the state and they didn't know where they went, went to uh, Bishop Gorman, I don't care where they went, they were counted as a dropout because they didn't trace them. 
so you can see where our dropout rates would be different. But I know we're doing something right because we've got a lot of valedictorians. Clark High School just down the road had more than anybody. So um, I think that uh, we can always do better, but I think that our teachers are working hard and I want to support them and, and give them the background of professional development and mentoring they need. Again, uh, I, I say this every time. Feel free to jump in, everybody. I can. <laughs> I love talking all day and all, but you know, the sound of my own voice let, is let great. Me, but let, let me, let me please. Um, one of the clients that I have, her daughter, is a enlisted clerk in one of the middle schools that came up in, in the northern mm -hmm. part. And <clears throat> of course, you always hear people saying, "I'm overworked, underpaid." Right. Um, I think she makes something like about thirty-six thousand dollars a year and all that. Um, we're, we're focusing on the teachers, and oh, I, I did a phone bank for one of the other candidates uh -huh. um, that we know, and I was able to talk to somebody, and she said she wasn't going to vote, but and she started hitting on education. Bottom line, she said that I think the administrators are overpaid. Now the other client that I have, her son is an administrator in the school district. He's used to be a principal over in one of the major schools. And I think they do get overpaid. I, I think it's over a hundred thousand dollars for them or so. But of course, they've got the PhDs and all that. So, um, it, is there something that, that, that well, I think when you talk about a pay scale, I think that um, first of all, you have to remember that you know our administrators, in some cases, I would say at a high school, are running a small city. I mean. They're running a 3,000 kid campus. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, these are our precious commodities. Do we want to pay them, you know, a small amount? Um, second of all, most of them um, have worked some years as teacher or dean or counselor and done some other things. Um, do I wish we could pay everybody more? Absolutely. And that's one of the things I would say. If we get money for education, we should about teacher pay because we should encourage people to come to this profession and be appreciative of the fact that they get paid for working hard. Um, but, uh, you know, we have about 18,000 teachers. I think we have something like 1,300 administrators. So now if you think about, I don't know, Wright Elementary out in Mountain's Edge has 1,200 kids in it. They've got a principal and two assistant principals. That's three administrators for that entire campus. That's, you know, you go over to Durango, Bonanza, any of these high schools that have 3,000 kids in them, if you have a principal and then you have four, you know, administrators, you've got to remember people have to do lunch duty, somebody has to do the, the curriculum piece of it and evaluate teachers. You can have 100 teachers on some of these high school campuses. So, uh, I have a really hard time beating up on the education system because we're talking about human capital. We're talking about the future. I so, think, I'm sorry. Um, I, I understand your point, and I think the problem is um, educating the public. Mm -hmm. Because um, I mean, if I had known that, frankly speaking, I would have answered her that way, but I didn't know what to say because I, I right. had no clue. So, I think the problem is also educating educating the public because once the public understands it, then right. And anybody, um, you know, anybody who, and the, and the school district embraces this, if you are a, an aide or an office worker or what have you, and you would like to become a teacher, the school district embraces that. I had an aide over at Elaine Wynn that um, wanted to be a teacher. She had her high school degree, so she started going to classes at the community college and, and started working towards that degree. So. You know, the, the school district does embrace, um, you know, bringing up their workers from, from any position. Can I share a, a little bit of my education? That's why I'm here. That's what I'm really paying attention to. Is uh, I want to give my two cents because my, let's say my kids, the older one are older now, yeah, graduated college, what have you, and the younger one is first grader. So I've been to both sides. Right. And because currently uh, we have Homeland Security, they have 
invited a lot of teachers from overseas to come here and teach. The problem here is what we have. In high school system, teaching a foreign language, the teacher are invited here and they will not teach anymore and they leave a lot of them after first year. The problem is that they have faced is that kids don't care and got no respect for whatsoever and it's a total different environment. I, I give that specifically teacher that they invited from China or Taiwan to teach Chinese classes. And because such different, what I found is this. When our kids are at kindergarten or grade school, we have no type, none whatsoever, any type of ethics or you know, behavior teaching, what's right and what's wrong. And all of them are being taught with an iPad or some sort of game. I find that very disturbing. And those are our futures. What I've seen from 10 years ago and now, very different. So yes, obviously that we have shootings in schools and it just go kind of crazy. That's what I want to share with you. And that's what I've this, well, observe, discover, talking to many teachers and what have you. Um, school have to, our leaders, or say administrator, they have to pay attention to that, rather than study something, you know, uh, uh, all these very high skill uh, skills, we'll call them. But it's a lack of social skill. They're all you know, you think, you, you think about it is kindergarten, grade schools, everywhere you go, they are giving to you, you know, here, stay on set, here's a pad. That's our age right now. That wasn't that before. And even with that wasn't that before, our learning behaviors and what have you, the majority of the kids is down bottom to kneel. That's why. I, because one, when my daughter is uh, in the third grade, came back and told, asked me, Dad, my friends say, what, what, they, don't, they don't like school. Why should they go to school? They want, they want to do, you know, they want to uh, be just like their dad, work in the casino and make good money. Sorry, that was back then. You know, they might make 10000 a month, but now, what, 2500 maybe? So those are the type of things that uh, uh, school, the public, the society, because I've heard a lot of blames. Parents is responsible, you know. But yeah, we are all parents, one or another. We are the society. We are all responsible. So that's something that I want to share. And, um, uh, and I, I've seen that you are very much all about the kids, and that's what I've discovered. To share with you. Well, I think that um, not knowing the situation of the school that your children go to, I, all I of could, them. You know, what, I'm sorry. All of them. Okay. A lot of too many yeah. people nowadays saying, "Well, I'm sending my kids to right. private schools." Right. Okay, I'm sending, I'm having my kids in home schools. We're talking about our sheriffs having their kids homeschooling. Something wrong with our school system. Well, if they can, they have their wife teach them, or whatever the case may be. Something wrong with that. Well, my public school, my local public school is no good. We're sending them to, uh, what do you call that, uh, charter schools? We want, you know, money to pay for that. Something, it's very broken, okay? It's not as good as it seems every day basis, okay? And that's, uh, uh, because uh, we have you know, interviews and, and we see and hear what people will literally be back. So that's, that's exactly what I see the problem is. I mean, you got to have high school teachers. They're teaching you. They well, quit the first year they're invited here. They don't even want to do it anymore because they say, I give up. It's totally different mentality. Well, I, think I, I, I will say a couple of things. First of all, mm -hmm. I think um, the first year a teacher teaches is very difficult. And I think that I always tell people you have to do things twice. 
whether it's, you know, you have to buy two cars because the first one you don't know how to take care of, or you have two kids and the second one you parent differently, or yes. you work two years. The first year that you do it is something. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't care what I, you do. Let's let Marilyn, yeah. You're unconsciously unskilled. You don't even know what you're supposed to be doing. I don't care if you're a lawyer, a mother, a father, a teacher, a business owner, you learn, right? Mm -hmm. So I always encourage teachers that tell me this is so hard, I'm so overwhelmed, the kids are so bad. I say, you know, first of all, I always say, what can I do to help you? And then second of all, I say, you need to stay another year. So that's the first thing. Yes, we are a different society than, than our Asian families. Absolutely from China or Taiwan or what have you. I, I, I would agree with you. Um, but I could be that teacher. So when I say that to you, I know that, I know what I did when I taught. I know what my friends are doing when they're teaching. And so not knowing the school, I will tell you a, another statistic. We have about 425,000 kids in Nevada, in the entire state of Nevada, that are in a school population of some sort. Out of that 425,000, we have about 20,000, or 20 to 25 now, that are in a private charter homeschool situation. So that's that's really not a lot. Um, you know, I ha I've had I've got three children did it all kinds of different ways. I had a daughter that went to Gorman and I had one that went to Sierra Vista and everything in between. Mm. It does come from the home, a lot of it. Um, smaller is better. It would be great if our schools were only 1,500 kids instead of 3,000. But we have a system that because of the growth and because of the boom that we went through, we almost, in a way, lost control because we were hiring 2,000. All of a sudden, we went from hiring 300 teachers to 2,300 teachers in a year. And we did invite those people here. I would encourage those people to stay here and teach another two or three years because I think you need to do that in any job, not just teaching. Um, we have a young man that's a teacher at Rancho High School who went to Rancho High School, went to Yale, and came back and he is teaching at Rancho High School. So we have some pretty high oh, yeah. quality teachers. And like I said, not knowing the situation, but I would offer you this. If you would like to sit down with uh, Superintendent Skorkowski, would you like to sit down with anybody? I know that they would be happy and I would be That'd happy be nice. to facilitate. Yeah. That'd be nice. I would be happy to facilitate yeah. that meeting for yeah. you. That'd be nice, yeah. um, because I know that he, I mean, he is, uh, he and I talk kindergarten at the same time, so I know that he's been there. I teach you all working way too hard. That's, that, that's what I've seen. And, and it is a hard job. And it's part of it is harder, not only because of our society in general in, Los, in Nevada, I would say in the United States, but in Las Vegas, Nevada, we have an added uh, issue, and that is, is that we have a service industry. But, you know, I told my kids, you have to do what makes you happy. I want you to do something that makes you happy. So one of my daughters went off to college, my oldest one, and said, I want to be a doctor. Well, about two years into that, she was like, eh, I can't do this, right? Yes. Well, what am I going to say? No, you're going to be a doctor because that's what you said. You know, I always wanted to be a teacher and I became a teacher. So I think that what we want for our kids is I want them to be healthy, happy, productive citizens in a safe society. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I want to ask you a question. What is your thoughts and feeling about the margin tax? Well, you know, I've, uh, as an educator, I absolutely believe that we need to put more money into education. Uh, there's just no question in my mind for lots of reasons. But the margins tax, um, I worry about because I worry about the small businesses. That's who I worry about. Um, I don't know that I've made a decision, and I made that comment to the Review Journal in the paper the other day when they interviewed me. Um, I, I'm struggling with it because I think we need to put money into education. So fast forward, it's a voter issue. I think it should have been a legislative issue, but it's a voter issue now. 
and it's going to be decided one way or the other on November 4th. And no matter what, when we get to the 2015 session, I think funding education has got to be first on our agenda, and we have all got to be at the table. Our resorts, our mining, our businesses, and our community. I have uh, I have literally invited a, uh, a business attorney to attend a governor's conference yesterday, and they have one form in which talk about this marching tax. By the time she came out, she go, no way. Well, it should they have been the money, proceeds. It will kill the business, yeah. but yet, but yet, the money will, is specifically wasn't designed to funnel down to yeah. actually going to school. So I said, is there something like California well, Lotto, which I was involved in it? And, and she go, not like that. You know, that's volunteer basis. If you don't like it, you don't buy tickets. But this one, uh-uh, it's totally different. Yeah. So that, that's, that's yeah. what our take is. Real briefly, yeah. You know, the big focus right now, you know, the city and the county, I mean, they don't talk, they don't talk about education or money about education, but it's about building an arena. You know, the city wants to build an arena, the county wants to build an arena, MGM, UNLB. I mean, where is the money coming from and who's going to be funding? What is the talk on that in the assembly on who's going well, to be funding all that? Well, you know, of course, some of those are county and city pieces, so they're not things that we okay. negotiate or deal with at all. Um, certainly, some of them are privately funded, some of them are publicly funded, and that's with any city in America. There, I mean, that has happened. But generally, we're not in that arena business at the legislative level, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't even know where to start with that conversation. You guys have enough on your plate. You don't need to micromanage every aspect, much yes. to our chagrin.